and just in the interest of being timely. Um, adjustments to the agenda. Could we, does anybody have a piece of paper we could start okay. circulating? <coughs> oh, for names? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi. All right. So I would like to add an adjustment to the agenda that as soon as Tara's here, we have her share her reports with us. Any other adjustments? Anything that we need that's been missed on this agenda? To the executive session. What's that? Not yet. I think Bruce was bringing them, and they're not here yet. Um, I mean, there's the meeting on the sixth. Yes, we there talk is. about the tuition stuff. Do we want to just talk about that today? I think that. I mean, I think we need the presentation from the supervisory stuff, or maybe we can just talk about it today. I don't know how long Bruce is going to be here. Um, Okay, so why don't we add that down into discussion items? Mm -hmm. Annual tuition rate. Do you want to just move to like principal's report until Tara gets here? Yeah. Okay, let's why do not? that. Sure. Um, and we'll skip assigned time and timekeeper. We do have some. Oh, sure. Great. Okay. All right, so we'll jump down to principal. Oh, principal's report. Okay, so we moved you to first in the meeting, Tara. Thank you. I appreciate that. I only grabbed the agendas from Bruce's <coughs> office. He has everything else. No. Okay. So we're moving it to discussion items. Yeah. We're moving uh, uh, the. Tuition rate. The tuition rate. Yeah. The discussion item. Okay. Right. It's supposed to happen on the side. Is it who's there? Okay. 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 So have you wrapped up the work with the auditor? No. no we okay. Have not wrapped up the work with the auditors. They were shut down from oh, the last two weeks. You. They don't come back to work until Monday. Okay. Um, but I can give you the numbers that were as of twelve nineteen. Okay. The general fund deficit was one hundred and ninety two thousand three hundred and forty five dollars. Okay. We had to clean up 192345. Okay. We had two funds in the supervisory union that we needed to do some additional work on. Fund 10, which is our general fund for the SU, and Fund 12, which is the clearing accounts for shared teachers and shared positions from the SU to the individual districts. So there was um, an additional charge there which would bump up your general fund deficit to 256,000 roughly. And then the SU's current deficit is $230,665, adding your 41% of that if we have to do that entire amount as an assessment brings your total general fund deficit to about 383,000. Okay. Food service. Can you repeat that last number? 383,000. What was the SU deficit? The SU was $230,665 prior to any additional adjustments that were made. This was as of December 19th. Mm -hmm. That takes into account the SPED deficit. We assessed that out. You'll see that in your warrants, I believe, last time it was in your warrants. Mm -hmm. We assessed that out as best case scenario based on the recommendation from the auditors. Okay. So that was already taken care of, so that brought the SPED account to zero. So if and when the AOE releases 
their numbers, if they give us everything that we thought they still owed us, mm -hmm. then that's all taken care of. If they come back and say, no, we're not giving you all of that, then there may be additional SU SPED assessment also built okay. out. Um, so was the SPED assessment in the 192,000 or is it in the SU deficit number? The SPED assessment was already accounted for in the 192. Okay. Okay. And then? It's if we don't get everything that we think we're going to get, that there could be a potential additional SU SPED assessment okay. filled out. I don't feel like I understand what the SU fund and the shared positions fund are compared to the just general SU deficit. So the general SU deficit, that 230665, that is the SU's fund 10. We had to take care of the $111,000 deficit that was sitting in fund 12, which is the shared position fund. So when an employee works in multiple districts and they're paid by the SU, they're coded to fund 12 within the SU. And then that fund is supposed to be cleared out every month for those positions that are shared. Right. So essentially the SU deficit is more if that 256, I mean basically that is an SU deficit. Which just the 111,000 is the addition <coughs> that was pumped up from your 192 to 256. That's taking into account the invoicing that was within Fund 12 that was subject to your district. So that's taking that and obsessing that out, which will right. be But it's not, it's not something that was in our budget that we went over our budget for. It's there are positions that you're using at Royalton and Bethel. Can you give me an example of some? SPED Paris who are doing regular ed duties. OK. That's an example. Um, your technology people that are shared. So Ollie, he's an SU employee. Ed. Ed, thank you. Those positions that are paid at the SU level <coughs> but are billed out to the individual districts for the work that they do in the districts. Right. So we include that in our current budget. Yep. So do we go over our current budget for those positions, I guess, is my question. I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> Okay. okay. That'd be something. We just cleaned the fund. Yeah, no, I, I understand. So that. I don't have anything in writing from the auditors to give you the detail that you're looking for. So basically, if if we're assuming that White River Unified District has forty covers forty percent of the SU expenses, um, is there any accounting for the amount of time for the para educators or the technology techs, or is it just? It's, that's all done based on what your agreements are with the SU. And as far as your regular SPED paras that are doing regular ed duties, that's all established when they do their time studies that are required by the Agency of Education. But what I'm getting at is they're not, um, we're not paying based on time allotted. It's based on the assumption that we carry 40% of the SUs. No, when it comes to your billbacks, that's okay. what they did in your bill. Okay, bin. all right. The SU assessment, like the SPED assessment, that's based on your percentage of the SPED assessment. The general fund deficit for the supervisory union, that's what's based on your 41 or 40 whatever percentage, round up to 41% assessment okay. is. Okay. Your food service deficit is down to $31,535. And again, I don't have any of the documentation to back that up. That's just the auditors giving me numbers. 31,535? Yeah. So the work that you're doing now, are, is the 192 pretty much, like are you done kind of with our books with the auditors? Yeah. yeah. So there may be changes to that as yeah. well. That was as of December 19th. Okay. I didn't know. If because you know, anything that they change in the SU ends up impacting every single member district. Right. So your number there, that 192, the additional numbers I gave you are assumptions. If the right, SU's right. numbers but do not change any further, but they but what still I mean have work is like, to do. Are our books separate from the SU, basically, them? Yes. Okay. Is there some way we could get them to release those? I've asked. Wow. I've asked. I let them all know we have full board meetings and individual board meetings on Monday night, and it would be awesome if they could get me those numbers by right. then. I am not yeah, making I mean, any promises. Thank you, though. So, and then and that's asking of the auditors to provide that. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's done by a whole separate division of the auditing firm mm -hmm. that actually produces the physical paper that they send out to us. The report. Yep. Okay. Yep. 
I guess another question I have is, do you know how closely our accounting, what we have in our books right now, matches what the auditors have? Like, It won't match until I do all the journal entries to make it match. Right, I know, but like, are there parts that are pretty solid and parts that you know are? I couldn't tell you because I haven't looked at the journal entries. There are pages and pages of journal entries yep. that have to be done to make the changes that they made during the auditing process in our software. Mm -hmm. Right, I know that, but like if those are all kind of concentrated in a few places where there were problems, then there's They're other parts. All over the place. Okay. Revenue okay. and expenditures, bill backs, <coughs> all of it is all impacted by those journal entries. Okay. And Rose starts Monday. Yes. Okay. Woohoo! She'll have some downtime because obviously she needs to learn the softwares, mm -hmm. but. Right. Because she hasn't used either of the software systems that we use in the SU. But we're moving in the right yes, direction. Yes, we are very excited. Yeah. So, and know. as far as your budget is concerned, I anticipate having draft one for you Monday night. I couldn't okay. get it done in time to bring it tonight. What that draft is representing at this point in time is status quo. Okay. 3% increase in salaries, 12.7% increase in health insurance. The changes to the HRA funding that are based on the state's requirements for starting July 1 for the state mandated health plan at a 65% funding level because that was the recommendation that was given to us by the auditors and by other business managers in the state. Yeah, so the VSBA sent an email I thought last week that indicated they would start January 1, 2021. The rates change. Okay, all right. But the benefit changes effective seven months. <coughs> okay. That's my understanding. All right. So, um, so the biggest impact there is the way that they're funding the HRAs changes the way we're funding the HRAs today. We have three tiers of funding in the HRA, mm -hmm. and so the state plan seat. goes to two-tier funding for teachers and administrators, and then a separate two-tier funding for support staff, which increases the exposure that we're currently funding okay. from $3,800 for family to 42 for teachers and admin and 44 for support staff for the family. So that's going okay. to be the biggest difference that we're going to see as an SU. Okay. Funding mechanism, we're already at 80-20 for the premium share mm -hmm. based on the last round of contract negotiations, except for in central office. It will okay. impact central office, which will in turn impact the SU's office budget. Okay. So for the sake of the notes, can you, um, you were talking really fast, just give me the um, draft one of the budget will be available on Monday night. It's my goal. Hmm? It's my goal, Monday night. Yep. yep. Um, w and it's going to include just the assumptions of a 2% cost of living increase? 3% salary increase. Yep. Okay. 12.7% increase on the health insurance. Okay. Okay, and the uh, and that's and that's active. The health insurance of 12.7 percent increase is active as of January 2021, right? The rates, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And any new hires that you hire for next fiscal year will be impacted by the new rates. And the benefits changes are active. Um, we are doing that effective seven one because it's a full year. The HRA is funded on the calendar year, not on the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So when I'm building your 7-1 budget, I'm using the HRA assumptions for a full calendar year mm -hmm. at 65% of the total exposure. Right now, usage-wise in the HRA, as of December 10th, we're averaging around 40 to 43%, depending on the tier. So you add another six months to that. Mm -hmm. We really, and that's where a lot of our budget shortfalls were, is that we have not budgeted appropriately for the HRA exposure for the last two years since they came into effect. Mm -hmm. So obviously that'll be a decision as you as a board will need to make is if you want to keep that 65% or if you want to budget a different number. But that's the number that I use as the placeholder based on the recommendations that I receive from the auditors and from other business managers. So the HRA isn't budgeted correctly for this current fiscal It is not for anybody. Um, do you know about how much that will impact our budget? I do not know right now. Okay. I only got through Bethel campus. 
Yeah. Out of all the district. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. As we're planning to, like, you're, we got a list there, they were listing cuts of things that we could do to make up the deficit this year. Like, if we're going to have additional deficit from that, we need to plan that in. Okay. Thank you. Else? Oh, your announced tuition rate? Okay. So that's what I'm bringing Monday night to the meeting. Mm -hmm. And that number is normally based on a formula on your FY, your next fiscal year's budget. So we'll do some percentages, increases, that kind of thing to get that number. And that's we're doing that as a special meeting because I have to get the numbers into the AOE by the 15th. And your regular scheduled board meeting doesn't happen prior to the 15th. That's why I asked if we could do the round table or the wagon wheels for Monday night so that we could hit each individual board for that. Okay. And if the auditors produce as I've requested, then I'll bring that with me as well. And your draft one. And it'll just be your expenditure budget because we're still working through the revenue side of things. Okay. So the announced tuition rate needs to be in by when? January 15th, I have to have the file into the AOE and out to each one of your tuitioning districts. <coughs> Um, at some point, we were supposed to get a update um, this year's revenue. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was supposed to be in December. But, um, do we have any update on that? I have billed out your tuition students. There are 10 students that we don't have residency verification on, so that right now is impacting what that is. I can't tell you the numbers off the top of my head. The report needs, I haven't generated the report out of the system yet. So. Um, could we get that for Monday as well? Uh, probably not. Because Jane has to book your revenue and she hasn't been here for two weeks, so I don't know if she will have the tuition revenue booked by Monday. Um. But I can try. But for our regularly scheduled January meeting, we should be able to have that yeah. information. Yeah. Because right. that was December revenue, and December revenue hasn't been booked. Because we're not using the revenue for, until we do for reconciliation. Actual revenue. I'm looking for a projection of we have this many tuition students compared okay. to we projected this many. So we'd mm -hmm. expect our revenue at the end of the year to have this surplus or debt. <coughs> so it doesn't need to be some fancy thing. But I would expect our administrators to be able to have it if you guys aren't able, are like overbooked. Right. So, you know, I mean, at the last board meeting, we were this, told that we would have it this time. And, you know, we should have an idea now of we were expecting to get this much grand revenue and we're actually getting this many. You know, like, we should be keeping track of this stuff. I would hope that our administrators are knowledgeable about, like, how this stuff is happening going so can we please get that we share I'm sorry I'm getting really frustrated well, we because share the tuition, we don't have anything tuition count with you right but like how does I that, am one person and I'm doing I the know. best that I can I'm not I'm not this is where I'm directing yeah. it as our administration because it seems like everything's going on you when it shouldn't um, because like you know we got the tuition numbers but like what did we build into our budget for our, and how does it compare and what does that mean for our end of year ex expectations and again like the grant revenue stuff like are we getting the grants we expected to or not like all that stuff you know well cynthia usually brings us that update well I, but I mean, it's like so. they should have it as well. Yeah. You know. But we. Okay, Owen. Yeah. We get um, for our areas. We are aware of what we have for like a CFP allowance mm -hmm. for like the middle school area for Title Four or Title Six, whatever it is. But um, when we need that information, we go to the business office as well. So um, I mean, we can go to the business office. I mean, we have files on some of it, but I'm not exactly sure what you're specifically asking for. Well, I mean, it seems like the business office is, you know, working through so much stuff that they're not, you know, able to do, like, they might need a little help supplementing some of these areas. And so, you know, like, if we have the tuition student numbers, like, that's something we should be able to figure out as far as what our revenue should look like compared to what we expected. 
Um, you know, we finished with 36 tuition students last year. We think we have 39 this year. So it's not any wild and fantastic okay. larger well, I mean, number of people. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. This is for. the kind of but thing. That, like we finished with 36 last year and we wound up with 39 this year. Did we budget for 36 last year? Because they're different numbers. I don't know. I, this is a conversation that Tara and I had this afternoon knowing that you might ask that question when we were here today. Uh, I think the one thing that is still out there kind of outstanding is that there are 10 kids that we haven't verified their residency as of yet. And that needs to be done before we're absolutely sure that these are, that there's 39, there's 29 right now. And if we can book these guys, some of them, you know, we thought were sharing kids and they're probably Royalton kids. So that all needs to be figured out before we can be absolutely sure. And in order to do that, I think Tara's, what Tara's saying is Jane needs to be helping with that. Uh, well, you don't, you, she books revenue when she does a reconciliation and she does a reconciliation after the close of the month. It was billed out in December, so that revenue isn't booked in the system. If I generate a report in the system, it's not going to take into account the tuition revenue I build in December. That's what I was saying. Okay. The other thing that I'll say is that we, and we talked about this this afternoon, is that um, we have to make some cuts. And I've informed the, the union, basically, that we may have to do some rifts this year mm -hmm. in order to be able to, they, they are on notice, they've returned. The responses to me saying that they did get the email that I sent them. I'm going to follow it with a hard copy. Um, don't know what those are, those are going to look like. I know we had anticipated last year about 400 and so thousand dollars of different things we were, we might do. We ended up not doing them. Um, I think uh, without a whole lot of changes, the budget's up about seven hundred thousand dollars. So we're going to have to. And you're not going to get that from extra tuition students, so. Right. Um, I know we have a projected state yield. Like, how much, that, that increased some. So how much would that impact? Do you want to do? I haven't even done that side of your budget yet. I'm still building your expenditure budget. And until I get that done, I don't even start working into the tax rate and the yield and all of that. I think it would be most productive if we just had a rapid fire set of meetings where we did different things uh, in order to be able to in the next couple mm -hmm. weeks. Um, and I think if we went through this, you guys would feel a lot better about every piece of this and we have a little time to, to, to deal with each piece of it and, and, uh, and bring it to you. Um, I've, been, I've been trying to get some ballpark numbers uh, and when I came up, we came up with a 700,000 that looks like that's what we've either got to get that in revenue or we've got to get that in uh, in some kind of budget cuts. And they weren't all people, they were other things. So it's not all people. Um, and that 700,000 is a very loose number. That is literally just <laughs> estimating. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be held accountable for that number when it's not mm -hmm. valid. The 700000 is is an estimate of costs. With everything else being equal, we've got more expenses to about that number if we do everything the same next year. Well, that's, I mean, the only thing I've really heard from anybody is that you guys want to be, um, you know, flatline number and not a big increase. And so that's what I'm talking about when I say 700000 That's what we've got to, to work on. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want a big budget increase, so. Right, because we know that the health care costs increased for everybody in mm -hmm. the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. In addition to other factors that are beyond our control. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other um, questions for Tara before she has to run. Just uh, maybe more for Bruce. Um, the Auditors, you know, we set a deadline for the auditors of October 28th or 31st or whatever. Right? Was that like an actual, actual deadline or was that just kind of a guideline? Because that they was really, we're not done with the audit. Okay? They basically they provided what they could give us for that deadline. Right, but like, 
when we set the thing, was it, were we just saying, could you please be done by this, or was there some contractual? No, there's no contractual. We have preliminary numbers. The only problem I is, it. oh yeah, I wasn't here for that, but <clears throat> the problem is we don't have the state numbers yet, but, and I've done everything I can to try to get that's them. that's not, <coughs> like they're still working through our accounts, so it's not the state numbers that's the issue. It's like, you know. It's the SU still, side of it. Yeah. The SU is the last entity that they audited, and the SU impacts every other entity. Yeah. Uh, no, I understand. And they're not even done with the SU audit at this point. So. Mm -hmm. There's still many things that they have to do. And as far as issuing your final audits, they're not done with the fixed assets. So <coughs> until that's done, they won't even issue final audits because we're still working through your fixed assets worksheets. Yeah. Which I've now resent out to all the building administrators with the questions from the auditing firm. Yeah. Um, I think it's just really frustrating to kind of get these numbers without any kind of documentation behind them. And Bruce, like... That's why I don't like giving them. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> why but, um, are you saying all along? <laughs> I, I would like to see Bruce put more pressure on Ron to have them release whatever changes they have made so that we can look at our books to get information about where we've gone over. Because, you know, we have this general fund deficit, but we don't know where it really is right now or what caused it other than you know hra caused some of it and we have some other ideas for some of it but like it's very nebulous right now and we're trying to build a new budget but we haven't figured out where we went over in the old budget so we know if our current budget is over and therefore that we're you know like it's kind of an impossible situation right mm -hmm. now and the inf they ron theoretically has all the information for our district of like most of the spending, I realize the SU's not done yet, but Ron theoretically has this information and he just needs to give it to us so that we can start doing, you know, whatever to try and figure out what's going on in our books. Like the information is there and it's been there since, I don't know, months. What and did you, you give so them, my, it's not, my concern. That, they were still working yeah. on it up until December 19th when they left my office. And then they shut down for two weeks. Right, but like what you're saying is that they're working on the SU side they're, of things. Everything. It's everything. impacted yeah. anything that we change in the SU impacts anything within our member districts because the SU is literally a pass through. What did you so give what did you give them? I gave the numbers that we talked about today. So we know where the areas were. There was there was a bill backs for uh, special ed uh, that was sixty three thousand dollars, right? But I just gave the wrong numbers. Yeah. Um, there was food service that was more like a little over thirty thousand. Right, but these are, these are the things that's in addition to the one ninety two general fund deficit, which our actual deficit for two thousand nineteen is much higher than that because we had some funds on hand going into two thousand nineteen. Plus, we had two hundred fifty thousand dollars that we budgeted for the bath and boiler, which wasn't spent. So, you know, the actual overspending in the individual categories is going to be something that we need to know, and it's different than what you're talking about. And so that's... He you know, wants the, the backup data to support it, okay. and that's what I cannot give. All I have is what I originally sent out to the boards via email that Ron gave us back in November. I have nothing since then in writing. And we can't get that until the auditor I it? provides I mean, it. I, I well, understand our, your frustration. I think Bruce, but you I, really need to put some pressure on him because we I'm need that information. Just Andrew, I put so much pressure on them, you know, I can. <laughs> including telling them they weren't going to have our business next year. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I have. It's not like I've been just letting it roll here. Uh, I feel the pressure from all six districts in wanting this information. I mean, um, would it be possible, like, I'd, I'd be happy to get on the phone with him and talk about the questions that I have. Is that a possibility? I'll call them tomorrow and find out if they're in a position to give they're you anything. They're not open until Monday. <laughs> yep. They have been working, but they I have not have physically cell phone open number. until Monday. I think we have a cell phone I number. I've, been, I've talked to him so much. And, you know, like, it could be next week or something like that. I just want... If you have specific me. questions, I would suggest write them up, and then I'll send them to the four of the auditors that are assigned to your district, and then they can... Okay. Pan through them. Okay. But my hope is they're going to give me the stuff for Monday night like I asked. A week ago. That would be nice. With that deadline saying, any chance we can hit this meeting, 
Right. Or it's just very frustrating. frustrating. Yeah. Oh, I'm with you. No, I am sorry, extremely, Jared. extremely frustrated because it is impacting everything that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. I really don't mean to be putting so oh, much I, pressure on you. I know. It just seemed like the auditors were lined up and we were on a good trajectory back in the fall. It sounded like we were getting them right in time so that we wouldn't be like overwhelmed and behind the ball like last year. Right. And and now things are just dragging along and we're I feel like we're almost getting into the same place that we were last year. Yeah, I mean it's and a big fear like in when the auditor provided the preliminary draft that oh this is what we have now but we're gonna have two more months to, of work to do then maybe we would have to be in a different situation. But. I just feel like having that preliminary information out and in, in the public was premature and, and it shouldn't have been done because it created a lot of reactions for information that wasn't even true. And that's um, why I said these numbers we shouldn't be until we can what did he say in that meeting? Verify. Until those numbers can be verified, they're not real numbers. That's the same way tonight. I, like I said, these are numbers as of December 19th. They're not reality. It's not reality until we physically have the audits in our hands. So when we're listening to these numbers, and this is a public session, and everybody's <coughs> listening to this, and everybody's reacting to things that aren't even real, aren't these things that we should be doing more in executive session until we have numbers that we can publicly yeah. let people react My to? My recommendation. Yes. That was what I had recommended all throughout. And why haven't we? I think we, we discussed that. We, I don't think we can discuss budget and executive I session. I think the, the parameters around public. open meeting laws. Um, so we would have to be able to say that that puts us at a disadvantage in terms of communicating with the public. Mm -hmm. And I think that we opted to err on the side of transparency and be really forthright about the fact that these are soft numbers until we have the final, final reports. Having said that, the reports that we were getting last year we now know weren't accurate, so I would rather have the reports be accurate when we get them. Um, I mean, they're not, as far as not accurate, I, I mean, I really want you to be cautious when you say that. Yeah. What you spent, you spent. Right. It doesn't okay. matter if it was coded under 320 or 280. Right. You spent what you spent. You received what you received. But how it gets presented, like. How it's coded in the system doesn't change the bottom line. Right. A plus B equals C. Yeah. That doesn't change. What changes is when you have prior year expenditures mm -hmm. that are billed or received prior year revenue or prior year expenditures that are billed and received in the current fiscal year that impacted the prior year. Okay. That stuff is never cleaned up until audit mm -hmm. because that's when that happens. So just because something may or your salary people weren't in the right class code, they weren't in the right count code, they were still paid what they were paid. Right. So yeah, that number that. is still a number that is a valid number. It's the way the reports and the way that they were coded is what I had found when I first started in March mm -hmm. that has been an issue in the way that these reports generate and the way that the system was set up originally because it didn't take into account any of the beginning balances. So that's the stuff that's changed since the audit, which impacts what's in the software system, which is what impacts what comes out in your reports. Mm -hmm. But you spent what you spent. Well, one example. That's that what I really just want. I, I mean, I feel like every time that statement gets made, uh -huh. that it's a reflection on the business office that we're doing things wrong. No, uh -huh. no. That's that's not what I'm implying at all. No. It, it's it's just that within the audit and the coding and language and blending, definitely the numbers are the numbers. But, you know, when food service gets out in the press that they're overspent by $100,000, and now we're finding, well, actually, it's more like 33. Like, that's, that's a lot. It's and a that hurts. Difference. That hurts yeah. people that work in that right. that area of the school, and yeah. and and that hurts that hurts me because I know that they're, anyway, I, I don't like it when that kind of stuff happens, and it's not a reflection on you. It's just a matter of, you know, rectifying all these different codes, and maybe it's going to get cleaner as we go along. Well, they're all going to change as of July 1st. Uh, yeah. I can't change that. Right. That's the I agency know. of education. I understand. Go to your legislatures. Yeah. <laughs> but we got Rose joining us on Monday. So That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a list of tasks for her to start on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think it's important that it be said that when the auditors got this charge, which I got, then I gave it to them, 
they wrote, put extra people on. They were in our office every week. They were, yeah. were working on all of this. Um, and I gave you the best scenario on the deadline when the auditor came to our meeting and gave it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any idea that, that we were gonna, there was gonna be more telltale going on after that. I was led to believe that those preliminary numbers were going to be those that you could use. Yeah, I think that's, that's what I was told. Mm -hmm. It's like we had them say in the public mm -hmm. meeting mm -hmm. those numbers at that time because we thought right. we were going to get the follow-up documentation for it relatively soon. Right. The problem was that we got those numbers into public session and we didn't get any of the follow-up numbers and we still don't. Right. Yeah, because didn't, he, didn't he say it was going to be like two weeks or that's something? That's what like I thought. I mean, Ron said at that October meeting really. he would meet with all of his chair, all the chairs within one week. Yeah. And I rem I mean, and I, you can attest to the fact that I was emailing you, when am I going to hear from Ron? Yeah. I have not been silent. Right. Yeah, I, I, I am on your I side. <laughs> So yes, I have been pressing as much as I can press. I mean, I cannot physically go to Maine and generate these reports. I mean, I can't. All I right. can do is give them the dates that we have these meetings and request, can you please try and get this information to us by this time? Yep. I mean, I had, that's all I can do. Why don't, as I said, why don't we set up a phone call where Lisa and I or whoever um, gets on the phone with Ron so we can try and talk through them. And we'll write up. Email or whatever our requests. But, you know, like I think maybe if we had him physically present, not physically, but FaceTime or Skype yeah. or yeah, we can <laughs> look at each other. Get some answers. Yeah, that would that would be great. And maybe by Monday this will be a new point, and I'll have the information. That's great. That's not how we're trending, <laughs> but yeah, I yeah. like your optimism. Let's be optimistic, please. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Positivity. All right. Thank you. You're Thanks welcome. For Thank you. And sorry right. I have to run. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm with you. I'm just as frustrated. So technically on the agenda, that brings us to public comment. Um, so should we move forward with that? And is there any public comment? Okay. All right, so I'm seeing none. Um, we have minutes in our packet um, from November 19th, and then our special meeting on December 5th. I don't know if there are any changes people would like to see. Um, Anything to add to those? I make a motion to approve the minutes of November 19th and December 5th. I'll second that motion. All right. Is there any discussion? All right. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. So the minutes are approved. Thank you. Any board comments? Yes, one Andrew. Board my all right. board comment might be why don't we have board comment after we do all the discussion and stuff so that okay. in the future because a lot of times I don't know that I have comment until we've not commented about something and other mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. So where so, would you want it within the agenda? You know, just towards the end. Would you before okay. the last public comment or something? Yep. You know, yeah. Move it down between policy review and board comment. We're in public comment, all right. Um, the town clerks aren't here, so we'll probably put them on our agenda for the January. I talked to um, them today, and okay. I have some information for you. They okay. want to know when you want to schedule your meeting. Uh, they do not want it to be on Tuesday, May March 3rd, which is town meeting okay. day. Uh, they would prefer that it be the night before, the night after, or the day after whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, they've got, uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to have it on the day of town meeting. And town meeting is scheduled uh, March 3rd this year. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, if you, 
um, it was Pam Brown that I talked to, and, and she asked me to bring it forward tonight for you to decide. As far as your question about whether or not we can hold it later, Lisa, mm -hmm. you asked me that. Um, I believe that later you, meaning in May. In May, um, some of the districts have done that, and uh, uh, Rochester and Stockbridge do that. Uh, Hancock and Granville do that. Um, I think you have to ask your voters at this next meeting if you want to change it, it as not to deceive them mm -hmm, or have right. a hold a meeting where nobody comes and and the board decides that or whatever. I mm -hmm. think you need to put it on the, the ballot or on the agenda for that meeting if you wanted to have that discussion and okay. maybe have some ideas of where you'd like to see it be if if not there uh not on on the regular day so. so that might be worth putting on the agenda for the annual meeting this year because our turnout was so dramatically increased then the meetings in bethel <coughs> this year i believe right. yeah. uh, so uh those are that's what the clerks wanted to speak to you about uh when you want it placed this year and also um not to please don't do it on may 3rd right um, well that's an assumption March. but what's the i mean monday night seems doing it before town meeting uh, i was thinking about wednesday night wondering if that might be better but of course i know in south world they've got the tradition of doing it on a monday night um well, it used to be on town meeting day right no it was monday no, no it was bethel monday. it was on town meeting day oh, okay. yeah um but we moved it to Monday night last year because the Board of Civil Authority, um, because we have Australian ballots for our um, board members and anything that's on a ballot, they have to count those when the polls close at 7. So essentially, for the floor vote items, the Board of Civil Authority and town clerks are disenfranchised. Like They can't be there if we hold it on the same day. So we made the switch to Monday evening. Mm -hmm. um, I have less of a problem with it being on Monday evening than feeling like we're going into a budget cycle again without adequate preparation. That concerns me. I mean, I think we can hopefully get where we need to be, but it's worrisome that we're not getting what we need right now. Yeah, I mean, expecting us to be completely finished with the budget process by January 30th or whatever seems daunting. And to be thorough and deliberative yeah, and right. all of those things you expect to be. It's hard. So what, yeah, I guess we'll talk about, I mean, Monday seems good to me, but uh, for this year. Wasn't it already? But I think it should be on the agenda that we look into like April. Monday and we'd have to do something to change it. I don't like, think so. No. Because no. it, it goes, well, yeah, I don't think it had been firmed up. Yeah. I don't get the impression that Pam knew that it was firm. So. Right. There were a lot of discussions about it. Okay. So do we need to vote on this? I think you need to formally set it, yes. Okay. So does uh, anyone... So we can go forward. I mean, everything hinges on that, uh, if we back plan and everything. <coughs> well, I make a motion that we have the town meeting on. I mean the school annual meeting on March second. March second. March second. Monday, Monday March, March second. Do we want to? So starting at should have a time starting at six o'clock. Yep, six p.m. is what we've been doing. In Bethel. In Bethel, so it's a Bethel year. Um, is there a second for that motion? I'll second it. All right. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor of setting the meeting for Monday, March 2nd at 6 p.m., please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So the meeting is set for March 2nd at 6 p.m. on the Bethel campus. All right. That brings us to reports to the board. Well, it's that time again for you to decide the Winooski Valley okay. Choice Program. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that every year I bring to the board and we make a decision on how many students in and how many students out. Last year you used uh, the number of 10, 10 out, mm -hmm. 10 in. And um, I don't believe that we 
reach those numbers for either category, but uh, okay. I guess I wonder, I'll pass it to you, Lisa, this is the folder that, or in the information that we used from okay. last time, and uh, there are some schools that make, that have more than one high school in their district, and they do shovel, sh shuttle kids back and forth. It's not really a part of the Winooski Valley thing. There's a kind of side deals that are made, mm -hmm. but uh, I do guess I, I want to know what you want to do. Know how many students we have coming out, and how I know we have some coming in also through that partnership, correct? Seven went out, and one came in. Okay. Sure. All right. Any thoughts about... And I can't remember, there's no cost or gain to us on this right correct. this is all correct there's neutral. no there's no tuition you get or any of that there's no reason to go more than 10 if, it, if that hasn't been used right and the 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 you can only take as many as you let out correct and right. um, so there's a formula for um, it says here um, potential number of new transferring students to fewer than 5% of the resident students enrolled in the sending high school as of October 1st of the academic year in which the calculation is made or 10 students, whichever is fewer. Okay. So. No, there's that tuition money that gets changed, but nope. is there um, people count? They count, yeah. Um, I believe, uh, no, I don't believe that is impacted at all. Uh, so if we have students from our district choose to go to another high school, we count them and our count, people count? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Yes. And have we been? <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> good. Maybe I, if we knew for sure, that check. would be good. Well, I, I mean, I, yeah, if Tara was still here, I could tell you. But. Okay. All right. I think you've been using the number of 10 for years. I think so. That sounds okay. a good number to stick with. <clears throat> All right. Do you need a motion? I think we probably mm -hmm. do need a motion, yep. and yep. we do need to formalize this. So. We make a motion that we keep the Winooski Valley Choice Award as 10 out and 10 in. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor of keeping our Winooski Valley Partnership Agreement number set at 10 out and 10 in, um, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So our number set at 10. Thank you. The only other thing I have for you um, is that this is way old because we canceled our meeting in December, but the career change assistant program is supposed to be voted on from the contract every year. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a program within the supervisory union uh, only if the towns uh, and the board affirmatively votes to adopt the program. Uh, in any year of this agreement, the career change assistant program will be available through the White River Valley Supervisory Union only if the supervisory union boards affirmatively votes to adapt the program. Um, so basically um, what this is, is is assistance to people who may be uh, leaving. Uh, I don't think we have extra money in the budget. At this well, I, I formally need to ask you. It does impact your next budget, so. Um, I have, make a motion. have we had anyone make that request? Uh, not Sorry. this year that I know of. We have in previous years. I think they yes. wanted to know if it was going to be offered. Okay. All right. So I don't think. I mean, I think this is something we do when we have extra money and we want it's to. Like, it's like a dance. Salary costs down. <laughs> Like, okay. Let's spend extra money in this year to save money in future years, and we don't have money to spend in this year to do this. So. Okay. Other thoughts? You want to vote to do it or okay. not to do it? All right. So you were going to make a motion. Yeah, I made a motion to not do the um, whatever it's called. The career change <laughs> assistance <laughs> program. That's it. Okay, is there a second for that? I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? 
Right. All in favor of not extending that um, assistance this year, say aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Okay. I don't know. It makes me sad. It's the first year since I've been on the board that we haven't offered it. So. Did we offer it last year? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Yep. Okay. For the most part, it's a good program. Yeah. It saves money in the long run. Um, I believe we have a student matter that I needed to uh, speak with you in non-public session about. Um, and uh, you have to go to the FBUD meeting? Yeah, but not until uh, 6, okay. so I got time. Okay. So we have the principal's report first. Do we have time to do that next? Or would you prefer that we... Move? Well, there's also a grievance issue, okay. too, I believe, that needs to be... Uh, on tonight or, or okay. I believe so. Is that an executive session? Uh, I believe it should be, yes. Okay. So. Our report's very short. I don't know if you've had a chance to read it. Yes. Yeah, it could just be if you have questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Some of it's gone by in time as well. Right. Well, I know that you've got a resignation within the food system and mm -hmm. are, is there more information or a letter for us to review? Did you get a formal letter? Oh, we sent that over. I mean, oh, it was in the I report. Uh, no, it wasn't in the report. To no, my it's knowledge, just a, it was just a, a sentence. Line. But no, there was a there was a letter from Willie Walker. Okay. That we sent to the central office. The central office, yeah. Okay. So okay. Willie Walker resigned as of um, June thirtieth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's confirmed. Okay. As of December. No, well, June thirtieth. Yeah. June thirtieth. So we need to accept that, that with regret. Um, we need to act on both, I guess. And could we have some discussion, like, have a like, session or something? Like, I kind of like more information than I am. Yeah, me too. Okay. So maybe later. All right. Yeah, we have session. So, any other questions about the principal's report? Thank you for updating that for us regularly. Yeah. It seems to work well into running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to go back in time and well, have it you all. You can see the tuition stuff is linked in there mm -hmm. about two meetings ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, there be some. What yes, yes, thanks. I was asking for, for that was conversion from just pure numbers. Thank you. Uh, um, the spending freeze, do we have, like, what what's the plan on? Like how long it I think we need more information still. Okay. Right. We haven't so. done information, so I feel like unfreezing So we're waiting anything. for the information is and then we're purchasing things that we need to run the school. Okay. But we're putting a little more attention to it, like uh, we had a request for clay for the ceramics class. It's not something we stockpile for the whole year. Right. Something they, they need to have. Uh, <clears throat> when we look through the line item, uh, and then the vendor said, oh, that's going to cost you $99 a package to ship, we said no. Uh, and we did the extra work to find, you know, shop online to find it from a different source with free shipping. So. You know what? In the future for clay, um, there's a distributor in Randolph where you can buy 50 pound boxes mm -hmm. right from a local source. source. So I can um, hook you up with that person. That's right. That's not a long drive and probably cheaper than the mm -hmm. mail. Do you know any good potters? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but it's really not good PC stuff. <laughs> No, but I can hook you up with some clay for a good price in the future. Nice. It's an example, though. Also, like the shop, we need some lumber to build something. Mm -hmm. These are consumables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But we're being very frugal. Mm -hmm. But those, uh, right, and the classes are still happening. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Good. Mm -hmm. But you know, those things like watching the shipping costs and stuff, they really add up. Sure. Yeah. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. We go with Amazon because they have free shipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing because I can afford to truck that much stuff. We <laughs> <laughs> got big trucks. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the principal's report? Okay. So <clears throat> at this time, we should probably move into executive session to adjust, address the grievance. We do, we do that after the second policy. Oh, we have policy first. I'm sorry. I've policy. clouded my agenda. All right. So the policy review, we should have gotten them 
they were emailed, cleaned up from Christie. If right. people have questions, they can. I didn't bring hard copies. Um, okay. That's all right. We got it. We okay. had them last time. And um, where did she? Yep. On Monday. Yep, they were emailed on Monday. I appreciate that they um, <clears throat> have been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Who do you want in these mm -hmm. executive sessions? We're going to go with policy. Yeah, we had to bounce back to policies. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. No, I'm. Hey, policies are exciting. They're necessary. Yes, they are. I read one on Monday when they came, the email came in. Can you recite it for us? No. Oh. <laughs> but I didn't see any problems. Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't see any problems either. I, I didn't see any problems when I had gone through it. Can't fix. All right. So do we want to accept them or how what what is the board do we will? accept them now or at the full board these are uh, our second no, reading you uh you you need to adopt them and uh we we need to put them in the paper and mm -hmm. fully warn everything and, and until you guys got to the point where you're happy with them we weren't going to do that and right and warn them two and three different times and put them in the paper two and three different times so if you're happy with them yep. uh, then then we would bring them back to you after the public sees that they're about to be adopted we can't fool the public we want right. them to be able to show up if they don't like what they see it'll be they'll be put in the paper so uh, if you guys are happy with them we can move forward and mm -hmm. and now formally adopt them at the next meeting um, They've gone, been gone through by policy committee members from each of the committees, um, or from each of the boards, and uh, I'm also um, bringing uh, four more, five more are coming next, and then we have another meeting, I believe, uh, in two weeks, the 23rd, three weeks, uh, to look at some more, so. Okay. We don't have to vote on the second reading. We just no. If you're agree. happy, we're happy with them to happy. move forward. Yeah. So we Anywhere? make a motion that we accept them. No, just no, just okay. uh, we'll so, yeah. we'll bring them forward and you'll formally adopt them after they've been printed in right. the paper. Okay. And they'll get printed in the Herald and the Valley News. Yes, I think so. Yep, yeah. I know the Herald, but probably the Valley News as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I better look more carefully closer to you. Okay. Now we can move into executive session. Um, and so for the grievance, who would we want to keep? And Union who, members? Who should stay? Well, uh, Union the members. Comments, yeah, there's one okay. more public comment. Right. So public comment, yes. Hi, I'm Carrie Cole. I'm here with Rebecca Fors on behalf of the White River Valley Education Association Bethel campus. And um, we just have a comment from the principal's report kind of as a reflection that when room changes and program changes need to happen it's important to include all of the adults that it applies to and affects and it's not as simple as making it a room change or saying you're going to move here after a few weeks of time but it's important to have discussions with all of the people at the table at the same time and I know that's not something that we usually address at school board meetings. Um, and we've had discussions with Bruce and Owen and Andrew and everybody. But just pointing out that um, when it affects programs of tiny children or middle schoolers or high schoolers or anybody, that it's important that all of the people are at the table at the same time when the discussion starts. So when you're reading about things in the principal's report, um, have the questions. Thank you. I wonder if that's something that should lead to a policy or procedure or um, I've just been thinking about that. Whether there should be a specific policy protocol. or procedure protocol to point to um, to make I don't know, to streamline communication or to make things um, more systemic. 
I'm not being very articulate, but well, I it makes sense. I just think that that the last time that there was a significant room change, like four years ago, when it was just Bethel Elementary, that was really hard, also. And so having it come up again, partway through the year, and being really hard a second time makes me feel like maybe um, there should be some level of policy or procedure or expectation from everybody involved. Um, and we have a policy committee convened. Um. I think in this particular case, uh, a lot of the people involved in the action don't agree with why we were doing it. and. Uh, and I'll take the responsibility for that. I did meet with everybody whenever I could or whenever it was asked for, and I don't think we came away from the meeting feeling like everybody was completely in agreement of, of doing it. Um, but um, I think for the for the good of the, the organization, um, we made the decision we, we made, and um, and I'll be happy to, to speak to any of that if anybody wants to. I'm not going to um, hide or, or anything about it. I, I really, um, I really uh, feel like this is the, was the best thing to do, and I know it, others don't agree with that. that. Um, so. Yeah, Andrew. Um, Thank you. I mean, we got the letter from Rebecca and, and then um, I guess had you heard those concerns before? Hey, should, should we just go into executive session? Uh, I don't. I, I think we're going. This conversation is going in a direction. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. I met well, with them face to face, and they gave me the same arguments. Well, Most I guess, everything like, was said to me. I, I feel like the discussion should have happened before the decision was made, and then if if they he, if you hear their concerns and come to a different conclusion, that's one thing. But if they feel like they haven't had any input or been able to say kind of what the issues would be before the decision is made, then you're making the decision before you know the full scope of like what the decision is going to impact. So I, like if that's kind of the issue at hand, then I think something. Throughout all of this in the last two months, I mean, we started having yeah, these conversations in October. Done wrong or anything like that, just like, in, in the conversations that we've had in the last two months, there were opportunities if there were inf if there was information brought to light by to the principals or to me that we could have discussed that and maybe changed our decision it wasn't a case of this is what it is and that's what you know I, I went to them I sat down with them I explained maybe some things that they didn't know about the situation and um, they explained to me what they didn't think I knew about the situation. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I just wanted to make sure that. And we did that uh, face to face. Uh, I just believed that that was, and it was emotional in in some cases. I mean, it really was uh, for them because they felt deeply that we were making a, a bad decision here. Um, uh, I guess that's all I need to say. Yeah. Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca Forrest, a representative from the Bethel campus. Um, I think I appreciate, Lisa, what you said in regards to the policy, because what it really felt to us is that we had, like, no voice in it. And I appreciated Superintendent Lab sitting down with us in that first meeting, and um, I, I think we do understand the sides, but it was that we, as a larger group, feel like there needs to be some sort of protocol in place when um, staff members feel as though they're not being heard and we just wanted to be heard. Mm -hmm. We understand their decisions are made that are not always favorable, but the fact that they didn't seem to have a voice at the table is our biggest concern. Mm -hmm. Is it more of being heard but also having some leverage or just Well, being that would heard? be nice, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, I think, you know, ultimately in this particular circumstance, these specifics, I think it wasn't a room change. We feel that it was actually a program change and that um, those changes should be made in a well thought out timely manner in a way that that wasn't going to necessarily impact in the middle of the school year. Mm -hmm. um, so 
you know, it wasn't necessarily a contractual issue. Um, we did certainly go there first to see, but um, it was really just a um, situation that two different parties felt two different ways, and we felt one party had a voice and one party didn't. Thank you. Specifically, yes, we think that this, this is not a, in the best interest of a population, two populations, really, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Deb? Um, I think also just the aspect, um, I'm sort of on the periphery of this, but have experienced this same sort of occurrence, I guess. Um, just the acknowledgement that we as teachers who work with these students every day have an expertise and a level of understanding of the needs of that particular age and those students. Um, and sometimes, um, sometimes that can add a valuable insight into decisions that are being made. And as Rebecca, I think, very aptly said, um, not to have that representation and not to have that advocacy for our students um, is very frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Thank you. I also agree with the idea of having some sort of procedure. I just, I feel as if, because they're very young, they're being discounted somehow as not important to receive what they deserve. I feel that it start, uh, education should start at a base level and we're providing an education for these kids. We're setting them up for entering further into school. And if we're allowed to do it correctly, with the proper attention, we're creating better students for later in, in school. And, and, and they're three and four year olds, and, five, and they turn five year olds, and, but they're still important. <laughs> All, all the kids should matter, no matter what their age is, just because they're young, you know, they're expendable somehow to, to move around, and, and they don't matter, but they do. But we were teaching them how to read. I mean, that's, that's supposed to be a priority this year. There are kids who want to read. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> All right. And I think that, I mean, I can say, and other board members can chime in, preschool is a priority. Um, it might not feel like it with this transition, um, but it is something that we care very deeply about and know the impact that it has. Um, Andrew, anyone? And I think, you know, we've been trying to get to the point where we have two, you know, the three three-year-old and four-year-old programs in both buildings, and so I hope the administration is aware that going forward, we want to see, you know, the full day four-year-old. Continued. Yeah, so, you know, even though this happened now, I'm thinking next year, we want to make sure we have a long-term plan for strong preschool programs going forward. I, I don't think it's just preschool either. I mean, you, I think you just throw your resources when they're very young. You throw resources at them as soon as there's a recognizable need. You don't let it go because they're young. Um, as soon as you recognize that they need help, you give it to them, as, as opposed to just letting it go until it becomes a crisis point. I, I, I think, I don't know, I, from my standpoint as a parent, having my kids in the school and working in the school, I just, I, I worry about how education is done, I have to say. Thank you. Anything else? It's hard for me to, to hold my tongue. Um, because we know that there are 
a list of kids who were about to be sent to out of district placements, and each one of those that are not coded special ed kids are going to cost you fifty thousand bucks at least a piece. Which could impact everything else. Everything in the else. School. Every right. every bit of money that you have to show to to use on these preschool kids and the kindergarten kids and the first graders and it's it's a huge issue and a huge need we did this to be able to not send these kids out and um, they want to be at home too they want to be educated at home too and they don't want to be uh, moved to another another place and just out of out of sight out of mind um, Bill Ketterer's program's got a 41% return rate for kids that have been out to coming back into regular program. And that's got to be the highest in the nation. If it's not, it's pretty close to it. Um, we needed the capacity to be able to make it so that these kids didn't get sent away. And uh, I'm not saying that one size fits all and they're all going to be in that situation, but it's a balancing act. And if I felt that the preschool kids were going to be uh, in some kind of harm because we did what we did. They, each classroom had nine kids in it. Um, we had to look at that and, and make some tough decisions. And I think, uh, according to a report that I got from the principals this morning, it's going to be fine. We think it's going to be fine. I heard that that meaning that they're going to be traumatized and they're at a tender age and they're not going to be able to read and I don't believe that's the case. I think, I think these kids, if you if you frame it as a as a good thing, as an adventure, as a, a transition, it can be okay. And you know, I I've spent a lot of time thinking about weighing both of these things and what's the most important thing. It's not an easy choice. Neither of them are. Uh, but I I don't want it to be framed that we're taking it out on the. The preschool kids and and not you know and they're going to be the victims here they're not i don't believe they are and uh, i feel very strongly about that um, and the staffing level remains the same mm -hmm. for preschool there are four kids four four adults they're not in there all day not at not all day yeah there are some of the kids the go same. home and the I kids mean, are not in there at 11 when kids when the three-year-olds go home after we're done moving things, two of the adults help with intervention work in the afternoon. Okay. So I'm <coughs> we'll be at capacity for the preschool. For the room, we cannot take any more. 18 right. is the capacity, is the maximum capacity for the room. Yeah. yeah. We're not turning anybody away. <laughs> and we, we turn anybody. We are turning people away. You are turning away yeah. preschool. I have a question about what happens when uh, kids move into district who are in the district. We have to accept them, right? Not for preschool. Not for preschool. Four-year-olds, we don't have to. Yeah, anywhere. Anywhere. Um, oh, uh, Is there capacity in the Royalton preschool? No, we're very close to capacity. And what was our maximum capacity before? With two rooms, we could have had up to 40. And I mean, I don't think I'd ever but, do that. I mean, Danny, <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30, but then in the uh, four teachers. Well, I mean, I mean ratio-wise, yeah. I mean, so the license is 35, but yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Right, the ratio is, correct me if I'm wrong, the ratio 10 of students a, to one adult. But then there's, depends like, on the there's age. a space yes. issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's a toilet well. issue. <laughs> but you could take more if, because the, the three-year-olds only come for half day, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you still have room for more three-year-olds in the afternoon. Sure, potentially we could take more three-year-olds. <laughs> but if you, I think at this point, taking a three-year-old in this far in the year is not a good idea. No. Right. I think we've learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm. I think academically you want to be able to prepare the four-year-olds, so to give them their own space and time to dedicate for kindergarten readiness. And when, when you're introducing, uh, when you're combining three-year-olds and four-year-olds, you tend to work more on social <coughs> development, just because that's where they are. They're not as ready to accept 
um, academic skills. I mean, some of them are and some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. But if you have just four-year-olds, you can concentrate on that. Um, is it, am I correct in understanding that in order for students to be entered into the restorative classroom that it, there needs to be a uh, agreement from the parents? So the way the process works is a referral is made. Um, there, a parent has to agree that they will support a kid being in the restorative classroom. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Right. The same right. as the next level out. The restorative classroom is the last level of being in the gen ed right. environment. Right. It's the same as if you decide that a kid needs to go to an out of district placement, the parent needs to agree. Right, that's that. Right. Um, but it's, there's a process so that most of the kids that, uh, all of the kids that are in the program, the parents agree to, to agree, it and right. they, they see improvement. And those, those, um, students who were designing the new restorative classroom at the middle school, our families are signed up and ready to have them enter in the program as soon as the, the space is available. Well, we have we because of the limited space that we're in, there were we couldn't accept any more kids because there just wasn't enough room because the kids are big and it was a small space. And there are kids and now so that are there are kids that a new one started today in the small space, uh -huh. and there's several more in line but again it's a process and the idea with the middle school is that it can be more an in and out Correct. kind of yeah. program rather than with the the k-2 to kids it's very small and very contained it's five to seven kids but it's a very contained environment the three to third grade to fifth grade is a little bit same idea but by the time they get to middle school if they haven't already transitioned back to their agenda environment, the idea is to get them back out into the mainstream where they can be successful. And then the capacity in the current room at the middle school is what? How many students can they four. take? Four. Four, and they're at four? Yeah. And my understanding is there were seven others in line to go into the... I, don't, I wouldn't put a specific number, but there's several others, yes. And their parents have agreed to the program and they're just... It, you can't you can't start a process if you don't have a space. Mm. So we have, with this move happening, we have started talking to more parents. But yes, there's other kids that are in the process. But thank you. And if they didn't, if there wasn't room for this restorative program to increase and allow space for these students, the possibility that they would have had to be then sent off. And there, is, to a special there are education. no openings in any of the alternative programs that are out there. EVA is full, Wilder is full, uh, Choice Academy is full. There, there is no other option, and we have to educate all kids. And right. Raven is full as well, correct? Raven is full. What would you have done? Hmm? What would you do? What are you doing now? Figure it out. Out. What are you doing now? together home you, tutoring. You know, we have to provide an educational program. Tutoring is not an educational okay. program. With some students, we have done some tutoring, but you can only do that for a limited amount of time. You put applications in everywhere, and you try to maintain the kid in the genetic environment. I mean, there's just not a lot of options. The other, the other point of all this, too, is that we've been told by the Secretary of Education to build our own programs because of Act 173 that's coming forward. And it's very important that we're going to be given a sum of money and we have to use that money in order to accommodate our, our students in the future. Uh, so if we don't have these programs, they're just not going to be out there or they're going to be very expensive, more money than we have in order to be able to place the kids out there. So that's part of why the development of the restorative program has progressed because we we need to have local programming for these kids that because the program out of district is not going to be available in the future because we're going to have a block grant we're going to have to deal with it. And only, only like what's the amount that we're in deficit with special education right now? Isn't it like 
That's for the whole SU. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, so, so 40, we're 40% of that. Of that. And a lot of that is because kids had moved to a higher level of care and moved from mainstream out to different programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, one kid alone moving from mainstream to, say, Choice Academy, the tuition itself is 70000 and then transportation on top of that. That we have to cover. That special ed, yeah, yeah. pays for. Um, Andrew and then. <laughs> Yeah, just like I support the restorative classroom, I do want to see it expanded and support it. At the same time, we definitely need to be able to accommodate more than 18 preschoolers in Bethel. Uh, so we need a plan for next year for like how we're going to house more than 18. Or we need to find a different space you know, for the restorative classroom to expand into. Because we need, we need a strong preschool program that is. A clear priority from the board. So. Yes. Um, so the restorative classroom is, in my understanding, is a solution for the entire SU. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, um, to me, that means that um, any uh, building school within the SU could be utilized for this program. Well, if it. it it has to have the grade levels that the students are in. Right. So for middle school, um, Chelsea, Tunbridge, or Bethel. Or right. So or Chelsea Newton. closed their high school, so I, I'm working under the assumption that there are empty spaces there that could be utilized for such a program where middle school kids could transfer into that program. It I just seems like we're kind of stuck in this model where we have to use only Royalton Bethel campuses for a solution, but it seems as though there might be other options within the SU that could be utilized for this. And, and we have looked at other options. I have to say that Bethel and Royalton are central. So, you know, it's tough to send a kid from Rochester all the way to Chelsea. Um, or, you know, the outlying districts, it's tough. But we did look into Chelsea. Um, Chelsea. You have to provide transportation one way or the other, right? Yeah. Part of the problem in Chelsea right now is that they are trying to figure out whether they're going to house their, the middle school from both campuses there, and they didn't want to commit uh, until they knew what the answer of that would, would be, whether or not they were going to have a middle school for both Tunbridge and Chelsea on the Chelsea campus and therefore be taking up those rooms. So uh, we did approach them. Because we wanted, we wanted the option of the possibility of the space that they had, um, but they were unwilling to commit until they figured out what they were going to do with the middle school. And the majority of students in the middle school program right now are ours, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, well I mean, you have the most number of kids in the middle right. school. Right. Chelsea has thirty. Tunbridge has thirty. Newton has what, sixteen or seventeen, something like that. Thank you. Can I just ask one more question? I'm okay. sorry. I it's appreciate okay. the time taken. Um, how many students can the new space in Bethel fit? It could, it could fit up to, I would say, 10, 7 to 10. Depends on what's going on, the, the kids, you know. But they can, if the model can expand. So the idea is that there's one special educator and one person that is um, getting their teacher certification because the idea would be to have a math science person and a ELA social studies person and then kids could, it would give us more flexibility. So. And that's up and running once the, once the room well, is over? Well, it will be once the room, um, not the, the um, that's for next year to have the two teachers be able to provide um, two different kinds of classes, but right now they provide as much of the academics that's needed in the one, but they still have two highly qualified people. So is it, this seems like it could be a short-term fix. If you're trying to grow the program and, it, and you don't really know the numbers of what it'll accommodate now, um, if we're trying to grow the program to beyond 10, 
is what you said. Well, um, go ahead. Uh, it seems, it seems short-term, as opposed to thinking strategically. I mean, where's it going to go after if, if you get beyond 10 okay, or so, beyond the, the so classroom So you have to size. understand that 10, it's a fluid program. So there's been 41 kids, 27 kids um, that were in the elementary ones. Now, all 27 were not in the same space the whole time because most of the kids stay a school year and then get reintegrated back in and then other kids come in. So you don't, with our, our population, we shouldn't have more than 10 that need this level of service. But I also understand that, that from outside, pe people might be coming from outside as well, to, and, and well, which we I mean get with money involved with that. I mean, if you're trying to grow it, to a level where it's contributing to the... Yeah, it just sounds yeah. like we're going to outgrow it soon if we start taking tuition. Well, I'm just like, well, well, we haven't, we well, haven't decided to take tuition. You know, the, <laughs> well, before you said you were going to bring them in. That well, I mean, the it, depended, it, it depends on how big capacity mm -hmm. we have. And, we're and going to serve our own kids first. We need to take first. care of our own kids first. Mm -hmm. yeah. So until we're sh we have a system in place, you know, that... We know that we're capturing all of our own kids because we don't want to take, especially at the middle school level, uh, there's a huge need at the middle school level. We don't want to open it up. The elementary might be different, but we don't want to open it up to anywhere. We do get calls. We do get asked um, until we're sure we're taking care of our own kids first. All right. All right. I do think we need to move on to the next item on the agenda, um, just in the interest of time. Um, Bruce has another meeting after this. Um, so that would bring us to the executive session related to the grievance. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you. Um, for the grievance, you should be Can you clarify which grievance? Oh, it's not um, The issue of uh, the business office. And we have two links that need reporting, or is this, this is the one that, that you were on? Okay. The lead reporting. Oh, okay. okay. This is <laughs> the first I didn't know that. I did not know that that was on this agenda. Oh, okay. Do you, would you feel better if we did it the next week? What's that? Yeah, two weeks or whatever. I feel better if we reconciled the whole problem. Right, the translation. <laughs> oh. Okay.